Welcome to the video guide for Tartarus's Wrath, Expert, an Agito Uprising boss fight released as part of patch 1.23 of Dragalia Lost. My name is Zenozillus, and let's get straight to it. As a primer, Tartarus has four mechanics throughout the fight. The first mechanic is Hell's Brand, which reduces all instances of healing to one hit point. Tartarus' second mechanic is Fury of the Fallen. Being hit by attacks stacks a debuff on adventurers, temporarily reducing the maximum damage dealt per hit to 999, 99, or 9 based on the number of stacks. These first two mechanics are disabled once you reach Phase 2. The third mechanic is Vengeful Spirit. This prevents buffs from being dispelled from Tartarus. And the final mechanic is Steel Forged Body. Tartarus reduces the Dragon Gauge of Adventurers when landing attacks. If your player is shapeshifted, using Dragon Drive or Divine Dragon form, the transformation will be undone when taking damage, even if the player is using a Dragon skill. These mechanics are resolved by dealing with the Portal mechanic, which I'll explain a bit later on. As with all Agato fights, certain mechanics and attacks will be skipped or repeated based on phase progression and remaining hit points. As always, we'll start with Phase 1. The fight opens with Tartarus casting Umbral Nebula. A slow-moving circle travels in a straight line, growing and detonating after a set period of time. The circle slowly sucks adventurers towards the centre if they're in the circle. Simply move out of this, rolling out if you're caught in the effect. This is followed by two red dashes targeting the closest and then furthest player from Tartarus. Dodge this as necessary, noting that damage taken in this portion of the fight will not be easily healed. Following the two dashes, Tartarus charges a red, semi-circular AoE, striking the middle before fanning towards the edges. As always, this can be rolled through or iframed. Following this is Void Ray. Two players are targeted with purple rectangles, which will track the players for a short duration before locking in place. These fire lasers dealing a moderate amount of damage. The targeted player should move around the point of origin to angle the laser away from other players before moving out of the laser themselves after the targeting stops tracking. Next, players are presented with Open Portal. Tartarus opens the blue portal marked with a curse symbol. A single player can enter the portal and once inside will be tasked with dueling a shadow of Tartarus. This Tartarus will fill the small room with a red AoE which can be rolled through or iframed. The Tartarus in the portal only takes 1 damage from each hit, but deals 20 damage to itself after each AoE. The clone has a total of 100 hit points, and killing the clone will grant a significant portion of Dragon Gauge as well as deactivate one of the fight specific mechanics. The blue portal clone deactivates the Hell's Brand mechanic. Note that once a player has entered a portal, they will no longer be able to enter the other portals opening throughout the fight, so careful player selection will be crucial to being able to deal with all the mechanics as they come along. The portal also deals a small amount of unavoidable damage to all players when it opens, inflicting the fury of the fallen debuff on all players. There's also supposedly some interaction between the colours of the portals and the colours of the player icons. That is, matching player 1 to the blue portal, player 2 to the red portal, and so on. That means that the status icons can be ignored, but there are also conflicting reports from players saying that it doesn't always work. This might change over time, so keep an eye on discussions and maybe even updates to the fight in the future due to its unreliable reproducibility. While the portal mechanic is being dealt with, players left with the boss next deal with Relentless Rage. Tartarus buffs himself, causing his attacks to become undodgeable as well as altering their behaviour. These buffs are consumed as he does his attacks, but can also be dispelled. When this buff is active, be wary of using skills that lock you in place unless directly after an attack is dodged. Following this, players are presented with Dimensional Shift combined with Punishment Arrows. Dimensional Shift marks two players with purple circles. When the circles resolve, the players are trapped in place, but also become invulnerable. Punishment Arrows spawns four slow-moving purple projectiles in a cross pattern. After the projectiles reach the walls, they begin tracking players, dealing a moderate amount of damage on impact. They can be outrun, but are nullified harmlessly if they come into contact with a bubbled player. The bubbles from Dimensional Shift can be escaped with a dragon transformation or by being damaged by another player's dragon, as well as Cupid's heals. This means that players grouping bubbles together can free all players with a single transformation. 
The specific timing of escaping the bubble wall vary based on mechanics, as you'll often want to utilise the attack nullifying effect of the bubble instead of immediately escaping. For punishment arrows, a player with a bubble can place themselves directly over the intersection of all the arrows, and they will be nullified. However, this will inflict stacks of Fury of the Fallen if the mechanic is still active. Tartarus will repeat the Open Portal, Dimensional Shift and Punishment Arrows mechanics with the Red Portal, resolving the Fury of the Fallen mechanic. Finally, players may see Mortal Chaser. Each player is targeted with a medium-sized, unavoidable purple AoE, dealing a moderate amount of damage. Players should spread to avoid being hit multiple times. If this is paired with a Dimensional Shift, instead players should group up so that one transformation can free them after the Mortal Chasers have resolved. After this, Tartarus will repeat mechanics until his first health bar is depleted and he is pushed to Phase 2. Tartarus opens Phase 2 with a series of red attacks. A dash, a dive, and a tail swipe. Note that the dive targets the furthest player as well as the overall pattern, as it will reoccur later on. Following this is Chaotic Nebula. This is similar to Umbral Nebula encountered in Phase 1, but it now tracks a single player and grows much larger. The targeted player should lead it away from the rest of the party, allowing the rest of the party to maintain uptime and thus maximise DPS. Following this is Phase 2's Open Portal. Open Portal in Phase 2 is dealt with in a similar way, however, the portals are marked with a poison symbol and the AoEs inside are purple and thus unavoidable. The poison afflicted by these portals bring you to one hit point, though so conflicting reports have also said that sometimes it doesn't hit very hard. That is to say, bringing in a non-poison resist adventurer can pretty likely lead to instant death as soon as you're hit by the unavoidable AoE. The first portal opened in Phase 2 is the yellow one resolving the Vengeful Spirit mechanic. The final green portal is the same as the yellow portal, but resolves the Steel Forged body mechanic. After a series of unnamed purple attacks and a chaotic nebula, Tartarus will leap into the air and become untargetable for a short duration. Tartarus will then track a player with a rectangular telegraph, which can be red or purple based on his relentless rage buffs. This tracks for a short while before locking in place so simply run out of the telegraph after it stops moving. This untargetable attack will reoccur amongst the other unnamed attacks from now on. This is followed by a dimensional shift paired with punishment waves. This is similar to punishment arrows in phase 1, but the AoEs now cover the whole arena. Players should utilise the bubbles from dimensional shift to neutralise the waves or consider dragon tanking. If the Steel Forged body mechanic is selective, only one wave can be dragon tanked as it will instantly remove the transformation. While it is possible for a bubbled player to sit in the intersection of the waves and absorb every single one, if Steel Forged body is still active, it will drain a large portion of the dragon gauge. Instead, an easier solution is to bubble to one side, blocking one or two waves and allowing players to hide in the safe zone created behind the bubble. Dimensional Shift can also be paired with different variants of Mortal Chaser and Punishment Waves. Players should be patient with their transformations as transforming too early can expose yourself and other players to often fatal damage. This variant of Mortal Chaser spawns an arena-wide AoE for each player in the arena, so be sure to utilise the bubble. Once his hit points are pushed low enough, Tartarus begins to combine his attacks with Void Shower. This attack covers various stripes of the arena with two slow charging lasers, with each laser covering about 25% of the radius of the arena. Players will need to be wary of where they're baiting purple attacks to ensure sufficient safe spaces are available to avoid being hit. Once you've reached Void Shower, you've reached the home stretch. However, this is where many runs will fail. The string of purple AoEs combined with no more sources of easy dragon gauge causes many groups to falter as they make a single mistake that often proves to be fatal. Mindful baiting of the attacks, especially the dive, is crucial to maximising the use of the space. When it comes to avoiding attacks, it's often easier to dodge them if you stay close to him, as there is more safe space behind him. However, if it's following the large circle AoE, that is to say, the dive, you'll have to watch for a tail swipe. From now on, mechanics will repeat, mixing Void Showers, Unnamed Attacks, and Punishment Waves. Once the Steel Forged Body mechanic has been dealt with, it's possible to Dragon Tank all of the projectiles by Dragon Skilling at the middle with the right timing. 
Attempting this before closing the final portal will likely end up killing you, so pay close attention to the state of the fight. That concludes it for the fight mechanics. When it comes to team compositions, you'll typically encounter four DPS compositions. Light compositions will also use a couple of cupids for healing. Adventurers typically used are Gala Yudin, Peony, Mitsuhide, and Summer Cleo, as well as some Gala Luka, Radiant Shranzang, and Yukata Karen. Most light teams will want a balance of curse and poison resist units, as entering a poison marked portal without the appropriate resistance will often lead to instant death. Alongside light rooms are mixed composition rooms. There are some specific speed clear rooms as well, with one such composition being comprised of two Gala Alex, an Elazan, and a Hawk, sometimes swapping the Elazan for a Patia. Some rooms are also made of Gala Yudin, two Gala Alex, and Elazan. These rooms put out a huge amount of damage that typically clear phase 1 just before the first portal opens, allowing those portals to be ignored. The speed clear compositions typically ignore the portals overall, opting to just bash in his teeth instead. Akada has forsaken us. Once compositions settle a bit, I can look into making videos on the specific compositions themselves. In terms of power level, you should look to bring at least a maximum unbound high dragon tier 2 weapon, ending up at roughly 9400 might for non spiraled characters. Players struggling to meet that metric may need to work on the Haladon facilities or consider more augments. For bringing in off element characters for speed clears, loadouts are much less lax. Expect to need to be near the peak possible might for your characters, as well as a specific set of skill shares. This fight is possibly one of the more difficult Agato fights we've seen, at expert difficulty at least, for the light element anyway. It gets much easier when you can simply ignore the mechanics through raw Gala Alex DPS. As always, feel free to leave a like if you found this guide helpful, and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this content. I also recently started a community Discord server for the channel. If you'd like to join like-minded individuals, consider joining the No Fluff Club Discord server. The link to join is in the description. As always, take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.